cricket. <laughs> well, there you go. Come on, let's hear, I'd be interested to hear your views on the, the Anglosphere. Well, thanks very much, Ruth, and uh, thanks again as well to the Freedom Association and to Tim in particular for what, as has been said by uh, Andrew, uh, is an excellent book and very, very interesting in that I think what's very important from our point of view as retail, I'm the business editor of the Sunday Telegraph, is how we move what is largely at the moment an instinctive argument about um, our history and about our relationships with uh, the rest of the world that isn't in uh, Europe into a more business focused, what might be described as a nuts and bolts argument about trade and about business uh, growth. Just a little bit about uh, me very briefly. Uh, I think I heard one of the uh, sneer when it was mentioned that I did want to work for The Guardian, but uh, don't worry, I'm safely ensconced at the Sunday Telegraph now. But um, um, quite interestingly, and I think this goes to the heart of the instinctive relationship where there is a great difference between uh, many of our attitudes towards uh, many countries in Africa, uh, countries um, um, in India, um, uh, in the Far East, and elsewhere, is my father came from Sudan to uh, this country in the 1960s to study and then to work as a research scientist at Moorfields Eye Hospital. My mother is from Yorkshire. My wife is half Swiss. Uh, so all nicely outside the Eurozone, which is also very important uh, for all of us in this room. Um, uh, but what that brings, I think, to um, a generation like mine uh, in uh, the UK, who are proud uh, uh, to be British, but also uh, proud of what um, uh, their parents, and my father in particular, uh, uh, came to this country uh, to do and to try and achieve, is that the Commonwealth does already have, as Tim touched on, a fair wind in terms of our attitudes in a way that the continent of Europe does not. And I think that's a very important thing that should not uh, be lost in this debate. But I first put my toe in the water of this discussion in an article I wrote um, in uh, February of uh, this year. And I just saw a little uh, uh, announcement about a gentleman called uh, Sir Alan Collins. Now, in this room, you may well have heard of Sir Alan Collins, but it wasn't some, a name that I particularly come across in February. <coughs> And he was announced, a little paragraph just pinged into my email box, as the new Director General of the Commonwealth Business Council. Now, I must admit, I don't know how many people put their hands up here if you were asked to name the previous uh, uh, Director Generals of the Commonwealth Business Council. I'm sure I wouldn't see a particularly uh, 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 luxuriant forest of hands uh, raised uh, uh, to, 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 to answer that uh, question. But what Sir Alan Collins uh, did for me was open a door onto how businesses are already coming together. Businesses are already looking for huge new opportunities uh, to trade. As has been touched on, Europe is in a very problematic uh, situation. And it was time, I felt, for the Telegraph uh, to start talking more loudly about the common thing. It's quite interesting in the media, there is very little written about the other trading opportunities, which go beyond what are called the BRICS, so Brazil, Russia, uh, India, and China, and it goes beyond uh, what's going to happen uh, in the Eurozone, and actually touches on uh, much more, I think, uh, advantageous uh, discussions. The idea of the Commonwealth Business Council came uh, from a guy called Mohan um, uh, Kaul, who was an Indian policymaker who started uh, the Business Council in 1997, which really was based on a very, very simple question, which was about how can we ensure that trade with our historic partners uh, uh, is promoted? Now, from my point of view, and I'm not sure this will be hugely shared uh, in this audience, I'm not convinced that it needs to be an either-or discussion around Europe versus uh, the Commonwealth. I think there's a question of uh, priorities. But I think that what is important is that, obviously, I wrote, uh, as I wrote in February, that historically, we had huge relationships with countries like India, Australia, Singapore, Canada, they were our massive trading uh, partners. And the problem has been is that in our obsession to make what is a difficult Euro relationship uh, work, we have let those relationships wither. And if you look now, what is most interesting? We need infrastructure uh, investment in the UK. Where are some of the biggest sovereign wealth fund infrastructure investors in the world? They are in Canada. And Canada is one of the now most important countries in the world in terms of putting <coughs> forward infrastructure or supporting infrastructure planning. And it is, as Tim has made clear throughout his book, 
uh, very, very uh, depressing that only five Commonwealth countries make it to the top 25 export destinations uh, for the UK. As has been touched upon, the shared language is vitally uh, important. Uh, it's supposed, and um, tests have said that it reduces uh, trading costs by up to 20%. Now, of course, there is some good news in all this, which we can promote. So if you look at our exports to India, up 9%, Canada, up 18%, and Australia, up 31% year on year, we are clearly doing some good things, and clearly in government, that is important. I got a very kind email from Tim when I first wrote about this. I also got an email from Lord Howell. As you say, Tim, most depressing to see uh, that he uh, uh, was demoted in the last reshuffle. But uh, David Howell did say that the important thing was that this was worked through in government. And another somewhat depressing fact in Tim's book, there are only six civil servants in the whole of the FCO. I think only one of those full-time who actually works on the Commonwealth, uh, whatever that uh, may be. What is important, I think, as well, and this touches on, uh, Tim mentioned Standard Chartered. Peter Sands is the CEO of Standard Chartered. It's a hugely uh, Asia and Africa focused bank based obviously in London. And I remember Peter once saying to me, the biggest danger that we have in this country, or one of the issues that we have in this country to tackle, you land in many African capitals at an airport built by China, you will drive on a road built by China to a factory built by China, full of people from China working in the African market. And what was interesting at the last uh, Commonwealth Business Forum last <coughs> October, yes, the UK had a presence there. The biggest presence, the biggest delegation at that uh, uh, forum in Perth, Australia, was China. So it's a way of us not just about how can the UK uh, find new tra trade flows, but also how can we ensure that those trade flows aren't simply cornered by others of our big um, industrial uh, competitors. Now, London, of course, has a massive role in all this in terms of the city. And I think it's important that we tie these, as I say, these instinctive arguments that I think many of us um, share about Commonwealth trade into the issue of how we maintain, for example, the city as the primary centre for financial mediation uh, in the world. The thing is that trade flows and deals between Asia and Africa should do largely, but should and must be maintained, come through London. And a lot of that is going to be via Commonwealth trading links. Now, it is important, and I think this is absolutely key to this debate, and I know this is not what the Freedom Association wants. We are not talking about uh, a new bureaucracy of Commonwealth nations to replace one bureaucracy called the European Union with yet uh, another. This is about trade relations. And as we have seen in the past, it is not about um, rights being conferred because we happen to be Commonwealth partners. As India showed when it chose the French Dessault Rafale uh, uh, aircraft for its uh, defense needs over BAE's uh, Typhoon, uh, there are often times when decisions will not <coughs> go the way of the UK. Interestingly, of course, the Typhoon uh, project is shared with Italian defense company and EADS, uh, a Paris and Berlin uh, focus uh, business. And part, I think, of the problem of that was that there was no go-to person, and it was a Euro suit that VAE slightly struggled in. I think as well we need to be careful uh, with some of our, well, no, it's unfair. Uh, we don't want to be too panglossian about what the Commonwealth uh, can give us. Now, Tim, you've said, you've mentioned Rwanda a couple of times. Uh, Paul Kagame, as you have read in today's papers and over many of the last weeks, there are major, major issues with one of many of our Commonwealth partners around governance, around democracy, around the respect of people's rights, which we have to be aware of. And I think it, we have to be careful. And if you think about what is going on in South Africa at the moment, in the mining industry, both um, uh, Longmin and uh, Anglo-American are having huge problems uh, with their businesses in Af South Africa because of the massive union problems there in the mining industry. So, as I say, I'm incredibly positive, both instinctively for uh, my own historic reasons, but also those shared, many people in this room, about our relationship with the Commonwealth, and it can be a trading partner for us. But I think we need to be um, uh, careful 
about how we um, uh, relay those arguments uh, to the public. And I hope that the Telegraph and others, and we've sparked this, and, and, and the Freedom Association, Tim, Andrew, and many others, I'm very much looking forward to the FCO uh, uh, committee report uh, on this. We can push this debate forward, and there is a duty on us in the media to make sure that debate's happened. Thanks very much. Thank you.